Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about how to create a netlist or design sync with the ORCAD Capture. So the traditional method, um, once your design was finished, would you would select the design name in the project window and then you'd run tools and create netlist. Um, now this form has, has changed slightly. Um, in previous releases you used to be able to kind of generate the netlist here and then also import this into a board. Um, now there's a, there's a better way to do this using something called design sync. The netlist command is still available, so if you still want to continue to use the, the old netlist format, you can. Um, and this also is the other way that if you needed to uh, maybe create a netlist for another uh, PCB tool, then obviously all the netlist formats are here for you to kind of continue to do that. Using the new method, though, um, you would use the, the, the PCB menu, and then you would use the design sync. But we'll have a quick look at the design sync setup first. So this allows us to kind of specify the folder where we're going to go and the default things like etch removal and user defined properties, which layout tool we'd like to use, the properties for complacements, and then if we want to use constraints and stuff. Um, and the configuration file for the Lego CFG is still available here, so you would still edit that if you wanted to transfer properties from Walker Capture to PCB Editor. Once the design sync setup is set up, we'd then go to the PCB and design sync. Um, there's also this icon here that allows us to run, launch the design sync. Um, and I can obviously have the folder here if I've got a, a template board or an input board here or I'm doing an ECO I can have that function here and then this is the output board that's going to go and create so I would then run the design sync for the first time and once complete I get the license picker and I can then go and pick the PCB software that I have um, and if I'm in placement edit mode I'll see a list of all the components ready to kind of start placing and I can use the cross probe and cross place etc or I can just come and select a part let's go and just select a couple of connectors just to place them in the design so you get the idea what kind of functionality you've got here okay so this design sync is a two-way street um, but it also allows you to make changes very very quickly so maybe let's just go back to the schematic let's go and open uh, a page here we'll just zoom in and we'll just add a new component I'll just give it a reference designator So I'm happy with that. I'm literally just going to run design sync again. And this is obviously going from schematic to PCB uh, and it's added component SW20. If I'm happy with that, I can then synchronize the design and that would then send the information over to, to PCB editor. So I could then go to here and let's go and find switch 20. There it is and I can then go and place that in my design. Let's just zoom in here. Now, um, Let's make a change in the PCB and go back to the schematic. So we'll just do an, an edit text, for example. I'll just change this reference designator from switch 20 to switch 200. Make the change um, and we'll do a done to complete the command. I'm not going to save the board. I'm literally just going to go back to the schematic and I'm going to launch design sync again. This time I'm going to convert it the other way around. So I'm going to go from PCB back to schematic. You can see this is the change. So it's going to update the, the reference designator. Let's synchronize that. It's done and it's now made that change. 